I've always wanted to do a film where I can sit in a comfy chair in a nice warm room on a cold winter's evening. And it looks like I've got it. Anyway, see all these puppies up here? Birthday cards. Jane's birthday yesterday, wasn't it, Janey? Mm -hmm. She's nodding and going, mm-hmm, because she doesn't like to be in front of the camera. Now, the time you're most likely to use your camera's built-in flash, like this one, is probably going to be at a birthday party. Maybe it's the kid's birthday party. Maybe you've gone out to dinner with a friend and you just want to take a few happy snaps, you know? Now, this little flash is really a get you out of trouble flash. We're not going to be, t we're not talking about beautiful, amazingly lit portraiture here. We're just going to look at ways to improve the quality of light you get from your little built-in flash. A diffuser is the best way, but what is a diffuser? A diffuser is like a garden rose for the end of a hose pipe. To use light and to modify light, you need to understand how light works. And I, th I find the best way is to visualize it. I use the analogy of water a lot. If you pop up the little flash on your camera and look at the flash tube, that's this little piece at the top here. It's very small, isn't it? And there's a reflector in the back. So when you fire the flash, there's gonna be a sort of a blast, a jet of light is gonna come streaming from this little tiny light source straight out over there like that. A bit like a hose pipe. If you squirt a blast of water from a small hole like that, straight out, you've got a sort of a rod, haven't you, of directional light. So what you have to do is to shatter it. If you squirt a hose pipe like that, straight against the wall, the water shatters and it turns into a mist of little tiny droplets that sort of wrap around things. The water becomes soft instead of hard. And that's why I use the analogy of water for soft or hard light. So to diffuse light, we need to shatter it. We need to make it soft. We need to make it wrap around things. On the other side of the room here, we've got Jane's eldest son, James, who is currently taking on the world at football with his Xbox, aren't you, James? Yeah. You're doing very well too, mate. If I just take a picture of James on the other side of the room using the little flash on the top of the camera here, and I'm only using the default camera settings, your camera will probably default to a 60th of a second when you pop the flash up. We're gonna talk about changing shutter speeds with flash in a different film. For now, we're just going with the default settings. If I just frame up a shot of James looking ever so manly sitting on the other side of the room. With the naked flash like that, it's a very harsh sort of a light. There's lots of bright highlights down the side of his body. If we zoom into it and have a close look under his jaw, around his chin, there's a black shadow going on around here on the fabric of the chair behind him. That's caused by this directional blast of light. So let's have a look at a diffuser. Well, one I saw on the internet, which I thought would be worth trying out, is a polystyrene cup, as simple as that. And they're not hard to attach. Job done. Lazy man's photography, I like that. Let's take a shot, James, with the diffuser in place. I'm just gonna take the same shot. As I say, it's not a masterpiece. That is a much softer light. When you flick between the two, the highlight down James's side has disappeared. He's kind of much more evenly lit. The shadow under his chin, it's softer. By softer, I mean, instead of having a hard defined edge, the edge sort of fades into the fabric of the sofa, but it is still there. I have one major misgiving with the polystyrene cup method, and that is the polystyrene itself is pretty thick. That means your little flash here has got to punch through a huge amount of polystyrene before it can get out on the other side and make its way across the room. One of the good sides of this though, is that when the flash fires inside here, light is going to rattle round and round and round inside that cup, and it's going to escape at all sorts of angles that's going to create a softer, more wraparound light. So there's the polystyrene cup, and we'll look at a bit more in depth at what's going on in here in a moment. Something else you could use is one of these little white plastic film canisters. If you can get your hands on one, they're a bit of a rarity these days. I've cut a slot in the back of this one so that I can slide that. He said, ah, I haven't got enough hands. There we go over the flash, pop the lid on, and there you go. I've got a little flash diffuser sitting over my flash gun. That's pretty cool, really, isn't it? Now, when I fire the flash, the flash goes off 
inside the, the, the little polyst the little uh, plastic film canister, just like it did with a cup, the light rattles around inside there and it will leave at all sorts of angles because that's circular. Some will be going down, up, sideways, all over the place. Take a shot of James. There we go. And again, it's worked very well. It's not quite such a soft light as the polystyrene cup, but it is slightly brighter. But it is a much nicer light than the original one, which had no diffuser on it at all. The other handy thing with the little film canister, of course, is it just kind of sits on there. It's not going to fall off in a hurry, is it? You could also make a diffuser with something as simple as a little piece. If I can get one out of here, which I can't of notepaper like that. It's the simple, simple things that work so brilliantly well. And of course, they don't cost you anything. A little bit of sero tape in true Blue Peter fashion, a bit across the bottom. Another little bit across the top, just overlapping like that. And then all you have to do, is get your camera and just sit that bit of paper underneath the bottom where the, the little flash head houses, bend it over and put the other bit on the top like that. I've put too much tape on it, but you get the idea. Now we've got this little arc of white paper. So when the flash fires inside here, the light's gonna come forward, it's gonna hit this little arc, light's gonna bounce backwards as well as shoot out either side. Just imagine what a jet of water would do if it hit that surface. But light, unlike water, will be able to penetrate that. So a lot of it is also gonna come straight out through it. Let's have a go. Take a picture of James using the white paper. That's quite a nice look. I'm not sure whether I prefer that or the film canister. There's not much in it. I think the chin shadow is a little bit softer. We're getting into sort of nitty picky fine details here, but whichever way you look at it, it's a much nicer light than you would get from the flash on its own. And it's a very, very simple way of doing things. But one of the simplest ways to modify light in this kind of environment would be to use a plain white business card. Now, normally if I was doing this, I'd put a plug of blue tack into the little well here where my flash sits into, and then stick the card into the blue tack. You need to make sure it's plain white stick it into the blue tack at 45 degrees to hold it there. Now I keep a plug of blue tack on my tripod for these sorts of events. And as luck would have it, as soon as I went to get it just now, I discovered that it has fallen off. So you're gonna to have to trust me. I'm gonna hold it like that at 45 degrees. Focus on James and shoot a picture. Straight away, you can see a big difference between that shot and any of the others. The light is really, really nice and soft. There's a bit of a shadow going on behind James on the fabric of the chair, but not much. And it's all beautifully evenly lit. So why is that? Let's analyze what's going on for a minute, shall we? Polystyrene cup first. Flash fires. It's inside this cup. Light expands inside the cup and it starts to escape. Some of it's going behind me and it's hitting that white wall there and bouncing forward. Some will be coming out through the top, it'll be coming out of the sides. And all this sort of rattles around this white room, remember we're in a small white room, bounces off the walls and then it comes over here and it wraps itself around Mr. Bean here. Doesn't like being called that. Not now he's big boy. Anyway. Some of it comes through here and it creates a bit of a shadow on the back. The film canister is a very similar thing, but it's not quite as thick as the polystyrene cup, so there's more light coming out. You're gonna have a better range using this method, but a similar thing is happening. The flash fires inside that little tube. The light, or water, tries to burst through in whatever direction it can. So some of it's going up, down, sideways, out the back. It's bouncing off the walls in here. And again, it's wrapping itself around Mr. James over here. But the majority of the light is gonna be coming straight through like that. So it's still directional, but it's a bit more of a shower. So it's not quite as painfully harsh as it would be without a diffuser. That's bashing into James and it's still causing a bit of a shadow over here behind him. 
It's going to be very similar with the white paper, only more light will escape out of either side to bounce off the walls. We really are rattling light around the place and a lot of it will come through like that. The most interesting one is our business card. What's going on there? Because that's not very translucent, is it? That's pretty much a light stopper. Well, our jet of water or flash comes out the flash and it hits that 45 degree card. If you hit a wall at 45 degrees with a blast of water, the water leaves at the same angle it enters. So the light comes out here, it hits that card, it bounces straight up into the air. It also is going to belt out either side. It's going to hit the ceiling pretty hard. That's going to turn this whole ceiling area here into a big sort of a light box, which is going to reflect light back down here again. The light that hits this, or water that hits this and sprays out either side is going to hit this wall and that wall. All that light's rattling round and round inside the room and it's wrapping around James. The thing is, there is no directional light coming from this at all because light can't penetrate through it very well. There might be the tiniest bit, but not much. So the key to understanding modifying light is also about understanding the environment you're in when you modify it.